Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, and uh, uh, thank you for uh, actually bothering to come and sit and listen to my, my babble for sort of half an hour or so. So I shall try not to send anybody to sleep. Um, if you feel yourself going, I shall be lobbing things over just to, uh, just to keep you awake. So, oh, I'm see, though, I've got something already. Yeah? <laughs> Isn't it easy? Um, I'm, I'm going to be talking through, as I say, coming in from BT, pretty large organisation. Um, I'm going to be talking um, uh, through what, how our current procurement practice looks at the moment. It has changed quite a lot over the last few years, and it's changed quite a bit since I started working on bringing kind of open platforms into BT myself. So I'll run through that. We'll look at the players who get involved in that um, and their roles and their motivations. And what I will say right now, and I'm going to keep repeating this idea, and I know Mr. Taylor's going to be looking at this in the afternoon from the other side, open source actually in itself isn't very interesting to people anymore because it's already there. There's nothing to sell, there's nothing new, it's not exciting, it's there, it's expected. It won. Uh, that game's over. When a new thing now, it's, it's how you work with the players and how you do this. So the, the, the tagline in the middle is really it, is making your project appetising, consumable, to a corporate, a way they, they can recognise it, they can pull it through their own processes, it doesn't break the internal systems, it kind of works. Um, uh, I think it was, DJ was saying in the earlier session, wasn't he, that um, management hierarchies kind of aren't very good in, in small organisations. Actually, I'd argue they're not very good in big ones either, um, <laughs> but we haven't found anything better so far, although our cooperative guy in the corner was uh, waxing lyrical over coffee that there are, he's not come back, as he's, he's cooperating with some coffee still. Um, but he was arguing there are better ways, but there we go. So I'll have a quick look at the barriers you get in internal corporates, and there are many, many of them, and a lot of them won't be what you expect if you haven't worked in that environment, so it's worth a run through. Um, so it's all, you know, getting an edge, getting in there and winning, because you're up against a lot of big companies if you're doing this kind of thing, proprietary, huge budgets, a lot of experience, yeah? They, they've done this many times. I'd like to ask you a bit of audience participation now. Um, who are you? Who are you guys? Who are you? Who are you? Do, do. Um, how many singleton small developers, little companies here? Can I just put your hands, thank you. Quite a few, actually. That's good. That's good, because you're a lot of my target for this. Um, how many of you in a larger company, you know, like a BT, a big, a big company at all? Look at the, yeah, you are, aren't you? A small company and a big one, yeah. Yeah, guys, so you, some of what I'm saying, we'll another one over here, so we've got a few of you. Um, what about a support company? So in chains, yeah? So you get involved in supply chains and that sort of thing, so you're a key part of this as well. So we've got a, quite a mix here. Um, hardware vendors, um, we, uh, I mean, we, IBM have had a mention, but we, we've seen them often as a hardware vendor, and they've done a lot of good, actually, in the open source environment, and, but they've, they've used open source also to leverage their own sales, so it doesn't seem to be HPs, that sort of thing, not many today. Um, any proprietary folk here looking how to beat OSS? That's good, because you're 10 years too late, guys. Um, <laughs> right. uh, any reporters or observers? Journalists, yeah? Good man. Ah, our co-op chap. Yes, he's, he's finished cooperating with his teas back now. Uh, students? Students, one, two. Teachers? Yeah, okay, academics. Sorry, I should have broadened that out. I'm very sorry, guys. <laughs> so we really have almost the full spectrum here, so fantastic to see you. Corporate procurement, guys, what on earth is it for? It sounds dreadful, doesn't it? And in some respects, it kind of is. Um, but let, let's take a walk through. It, it's from a, a business's point of view. They have to focus very hard on what they do. It's about making money. That's what they're there for. They have, unless they're a cooperative, they have things like shareholders and that kind of thing, and they want, they want cash in their pockets on a fairly regular basis. Um, so the procurement process is about, getting, it's about price and performance against a deal. They don't care what's in it. They really don't. It could be ice cream or widgets not interested in the contents. So a lot of the things you think are incredibly important actually don't matter to them, right? to the process, to the system. It's not what it's for. It therefore often focuses on short rather than long-term long stuff. Right? So the things where uh, an open-type project can really be beneficial um, in terms of keeping it going and change that sort of thing don't necessarily immediately come out. So you've got to work around that. You've got to find a way to get that into the mix so it becomes visible. Particularly exit costs. So you get a really low entry cost, <laughs> an impossible exit cost. Now, this is an environment where open projects can really turn that around. So that's the sort of stuff to focus. So when you talk to procurement guys, show them what you offer. It's different. It's a different model. It's a different kind of thinking. And it's mostly not about stitching up your customers, which is what we've been dealing with as a, on the receiving end for a long time. Technical experts often don't get a veto or even a casting vote in these things. So don't imagine that turn, you're turning up with, with Mr. Little's best WordPress ever 
is going to get you necessarily through the door. The technical guy might go, yes, brilliant, I love him, I've seen his present, it's fantastic, it's what we want. And the lawyer sits there and goes, no, that's it, you've lost. So that isn't the way, right? Financial cycles, here's the thing. Um, uh, big companies, management hierarchies, we talk about that sort of thing. One of the things they worry about all the time is the money, the budget, the objectives. Everyone's got them weekly, monthly, quarterly. They've got to deliver stuff, so that does matter. It matters a lot, which is why a cheap entry cost can look really tempting. Uh, people move around a lot. Some people move so quickly they don't get hit by the consequences. <laughs> Just look at politicians. They're very good at it. Very, very good at it. EU procurement requirements. I know, I know we may have voted to exit. I didn't, but that may be happening. But at the moment, they're a big thing, so they're a, and, and they're a good thing because they mean that we have a formal process and we have to go out to tender beyond a certain money, which means everybody gets to play, and that includes you. Even with your very small project, your very small company, you can come in there just like everybody else. That's one of the reasons why it's good. The process often involves a detailed analysis of options, um, often very complex with mathematically weighted models and that kind of thing. So you, th these sort of things, it's worth trying to get your head around, trying to understand them, learn about them, because they probably won't play to your favour. You need to get in and help. Give them your own model, because they won't have thought of it. They really, they won't. That's where you can help. Um, so as I say, it's not always directly suited to OSS, so part of your, your, your game and your process is to try and shift it around for you. We're going to move forward. So what's the process look like as, as a whole? For a very large one, and, and this, I'll use this example because I was, heavily, I was a technical lead for, um, uh, for the MVNO, the, the mobile thing that BT did, which resulted in us eventually buying EE. So I, I do know this at, uh, recently in some detail on what we do. It can be a very, very formal process for a big project, and something like a, you know, when you're looking at doing a huge deal. It will be. Smaller ones may not be. Um, but it goes like this. ITT, you must know what ITT is. Somebody will, invitation to tender. We, we put a pro quite a short description out of what we want, deliberately so, often, and expect you to come back. Don't reply with one page. <laughs> you failed. Details, you've got to get everything. That's your first shot at looking beautiful. So that's, you start by looking good there. Um, that will go through a process of review internally. There'll be negotiations against your responses. There'll be people who come and turn up. A company like BT will have rooms full of people. I'll talk through in a couple of minutes of who they're going to be. You need to know what they're interested in. Because it probably, if you haven't dealt with it, you won't have thought of it. You won't guess it when they're there. Because they won't tell you. They will expect you to know. So you need to know. A round of internal competitions. It's like a kind of FA Cup sort of process. Um, the worst fit vendor drops out probably each time. They'll go back and say, resubmit your offer. You get to eventually something a BAFO. Uh, who knows what a BAFO is? Nobody. Here's the thing. Ah, of course you would. Right, a couple of people. Best and final offer. Best and final offer, which means you need to know what's your walkaway position. Don't agree to something you can't do. That is the biggest crime in the corporate landscape you can commit. Don't do it. If it, if it looks simple, you probably don't get it. Right? Because it won't be, right? So know what it is. If it's a really big one, you might be a baffafafo because you do another round, and sometimes it can go on a bit longer. So he wants there may be more than one, but you will see that term. You need to know what it is, and you need to know what your wake walk away is, and don't make your walk away your baffo. Because just because he wants the best and final offer, it doesn't mean it's your final offer. Yeah, think negotiations. Yeah, um, um, eventually you get to place a contract. You go and drink, you know, your champagne and eat your caviar and smoke salmon, and, and life will be brilliant. Until of course it comes around to later, we'll come a few things that catch you out. So who who are your players? Um, we're going to be looking at uh, a senior director, and at this early stage, these people are extremely important because they are ultimately responsible for all the spend and the business risk. In a large organisation, they're higher up in this hierarchy that we can't live without. Right? They're paid an awful lot of money, and they often make decisions very, very quickly. They'll get the reward when things go well. But when things go badly, they're looking for what they would call shared risk. That means you take the risk, and they take the reward. It's a different sort of sharing than you're probably used to. Yeah? So you need good advice. You need good legal advice in your contracts. Don't get caught out because if, they, if, if the team can push all the risk onto you, they will. So you know, think. You don't have to say yes to everything. Negotiate. Yeah? They expect you to. Right? Um, they will need confidence that you can deliver, and you've got to find ways of giving that confidence. Um, so there are a lot of things you mustn't do, which I'll come to, and, and they seem appealing at the time. And, and one of them isn't saying open source is really cool, because that is you walk out the door at that point. You might don't even don't sit down. You waste your time. Um, th they will have a close eye on 
on the finances and, and they'll know the finance guys very, very well. And they probably have good contacts with your competitors who may have been at this for years. Got to build a relationship. Critical, critical person. They don't have to like them. They may not like you. That's not the game. Yeah? It's not about that. Program manager, you will deal with. Um, uh, and they're responsible for making the whole thing work together. If you're vending something into a company like BT um, or any other large organization, you're, you're producing a little Lego brick that goes into a massive complicated system. The whole thing has to work together. You've got to work with probably other vendors out there, people you've never come across before, internal developers, all sorts of people. It's their job to see that fits together. And they will tell you about it if you ask them. So don't be shy. <laughs> Right? And again, if it seems simple, you probably haven't understood it. In fact, I'll say you won't have understood it. It's not. It's going to be awfully complicated. So get the details. They will be coordinated. They'll have a team of project managers. They'll probably want a project manager from your side to be involved. What's a project manager? Well, you bloody well better get one if, you do, if that's the question going through your mind, because you're going to need one. Right? It may be internal, you may bring it in, you may bring it in from the consultancy companies, and that sort of thing Mr. Taylor gets involved in. I've used companies like Dimension Data, IBM do it, lots of companies do it. But you're going to want some help. Um, something like Prince2, if you don't know what it is, look it up, because they all know it. Learn to speak their language. They're not going to learn to speak yours, they expect you to speak theirs, because you're selling to them. Right? So that's the relationship, guys. It's different. Um, they are going to be absolutely driven by internal corporate cycles. They may be agile cycles. Agile will look a lot like open source development at first sight because it's based on it very heavily, but it's not open source development. It's absolutely tight, schedule-driven, sort of water, lots of little waterfalls. It's like Aesgarth Falls, yeah, lots of little waterfalls. Right? It's just not a huge big one. So it looks at first sight like, uh, like um, open source, but it's not, not at all. You need to get this, this they're going to want to know everything about you, where your kids go to school, where your family lives. They want to know everything because they're never going to let you out of their sight. If something goes wrong, it's you they're coming for. Right? So be ready and be prepared and make sure you've got a support structure. So get to know them. Go and see them. Make them comfortable. Make them happy. Have lots of chats. Don't, that's a good place to put time. A network architect and system architect, they'll be driving the technical aspects. This is comfort zone for you guys. Dead easy. You'll get on with them well. They'll understand everything that you're doing. They'll want to talk about protocols and, and all the rest of it. You need to give them a really detailed spec up front. Because if you don't, the person who did is going to go forward on the next round. So have that up front. Don't expect them to go and say, oh, go and read my wiki. They won't. They're busy. They don't have time. You've got to make it easy for them. Right? So get that prepared beforehand. But they, they'll be your friend. Yeah, they'll understand it. They're probably heavily involved. They've probably been following this stuff for years. They may even be involved in some of the projects you are. Right? Just because they're a big company doesn't mean they don't do it. Right? CIO, that's where I am at the moment. Um, their response have an interesting responsibility in, in um, sort of uh, modern environments. They, they, they look at this customer experience in kind of end-to-end -end way at the moment. So anything that impacts the customer experience in any way, they're going to be looking in touch with everyone. So uh, it's quite a nice role in many respects. You get to look over everything, talk to everyone. Very influential at the beginning of a project can probably kick you out, actually, early on. So you need to get to know them well. Be nice to me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as the thing progresses, as you go through in deliveries and many cycles and the stuff I've done in the past, I don't have anything to do with the stuff I've done now. It runs on in its own. I don't, you know, I'll talk to people occasionally, we'll go for a drink and chat about old times, wasn't it great? But I'm not interested in that anymore. I'm doing new stuff. But early on, these are people you need to know. Uh, they'll have a project sign off on it, almost certainly. They'll have budget authority, almost certainly. And they will be driving <coughs> through the program manager. The program manager's first contact for the rest of the development is through the CIO. It's a very important person. So maybe the first person you talk to and you really need to get them on board. The architect is easy. This person is going to ask you a lot of very hard questions. So you need to have some good answers ready. Procurement lead, we talked about them already. What do they do? Well, we run the, they're, they're interested in costs, licensing and support costs and that sort of thing. They won't really care about the type of the license. They will worry about the risk, though, because that's their job. Are, you, are they becoming subject to a bunch of patents, lawsuits, potentially, that sort of thing? That will interest them. Yeah. Um, is there code that shouldn't be in there? Open source that we might be quite happy with. It's not a problem. And BTs use lots of it. Lots of companies do. But you've got to talk to them. They are the people to negotiate on this. And they will, amongst other things, be looking at when you're going to get paid. When you do a big delivery, you're not going to get it up front, guys. You really aren't. You can negotiate for some to keep you going. And you can probably look to negotiate for a series of drops. If you don't know how to do this, get some advice. Get involved with a company that can, that's done integrations that knows how to do this. Because you'll get stitched if you don't. Because you'll get to a point where you can't put the lecky on to do the next build, and 
there's a lot of money just coming in two weeks, but it's not here now. Look after yourselves, because th these companies won't, they won't they expect you to do it. You're professionals, aren't you? You're getting paid for it, that's what it means. It just means you're getting paid, right? So you, you, it's your responsibility to sort that. So if you don't know how, get some help, get a consultant. Security guy um, is, um, well, I think the, the line at the bottom, they're not employed for their sense of humour, would be my, um, <laughs> my bottom tagline. Um, they are important, they'll ask you hard and difficult questions. Get a security analysis on what you're doing before you bid, have it ready. It's very hard to do it afterwards. You can't do it on the fly. You'll be asked, for, in a process like this, you'll be asked for a bunch of things that by the same day, five o'clock the same day, nine o'clock the next morning, you'll be working overnight and stuff. You need a team of people, you have all this stuff ready beforehand. If it isn't ready beforehand, you will fail. You will, because you get too tired, you won't be able to get up in the morning, you'll start agreeing to stupid things. So you'll either agree to something you shouldn't do or you'll get kicked out. Get it prepared. The lawyers, aren't they lovely, my friends? Um, once you get to lawyers in one of these things, you're, 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 you're almost there. If they appear, You've nearly done it. You're very, very, very nearly ready to sign a deal. So how many of you have got a lawyer involved in your project? Yes, exactly. Oh, a couple. Right. So the rest of you are going to get crucified by the lawyers because it's their job to make sure that you are responsible for everything you're supposed to deliver. It's your lawyer's job to make sure that you get paid for it. And if you haven't got one, well, you know where that's going to go. So always take legal advice before you sign and don't sign in a hurry. Don't be pressured to sign now. They'll, they'll be going, got to sign now, got to sign now. Don't. Always walk away, take a breath, have a cup of tea, get some advice. They'll keep doing it. Don't. Take your time. Um, next phase, I'm going to run through this fairly quickly because uh, you guys will... Uh, how many of you are familiar with agile processes? Uh, show of hands, uh, loads of you. So I'll just run through very quickly on these because you know this stuff as I thought you would, because we did the run-through beforehand. Um, the, the project manager will be in constant co contact. If you haven't got one, don't sit there and think, I don't need one. You do. You do. Really, you do. Because they'll fend off all. When you get all that print to related questions, come, you won't know what the hell it means. And you'll panic. And you, instead of focusing on fixes and code drops, you'll be trying to learn print to on the fly. It's not the way to do it. Get yourself help. End-to-end -end designer. Um, the uh, company will provide one. Um, They'll know the detail of the systems, down to a very, very low level. Um, they'll do all this agile stuff, they'll work with the test guys, they'll work on test cases and that sort of thing. At this point, you'll find out whether your contract was any good, because if you've not agreed to the right kind of deal on defect tip fixes, you'll find you can't do them in time and you start getting penalties, which means your contract isn't worth anything. So up front was the time. If you're worrying about it now, sorry guys, you missed the boat. Right? Get your designer co-located with them, if you can if you can get someone working really closely with them. If you can't co-locate, you can do it remotely. But these guys will work with you. They're not there to stitch you up, they're there to make it work. Actually, they are really your friends, but they're locked into a cycle that means you have to deliver. Um, a product manager, you won't normally see one of these and, um, unless um, uh, you're doing something that really hits an end customer. So if you work on an Android app, um, for example, or an iPhone app for um, you know, some like BT Sport or something like that, if you're delivering one in, then you will probably see project managers. They work with things called personas. Have any come across personas at all? A couple of people, yeah. If you haven't got one, you need to think about some for what you're doing, and really you want to try and get there. So go, you need to talk to them. The project managers are the most flighty people in the world. They'll zoom off all over the place. They worry about um, things. They think totally differently. They are not developers. They're not generally um, uh, super technical people. They have a completely different approach to the world. So they're all over the place. So you need to spend time with them. But if, if, if you don't have persona, um, then you need to get some. If you don't know how to do it, get some help because it will be important if you're doing that kind of project. Um, they will worry about migrations. They will worry about fit into wider, wider portfolio. So if you're offering a replacement platform, there are half a million customers on the existing one, or 10 million, or 15 million. They're going to worry about what happens when they move those customers. How many customers are they going to lose? Because each one of those customers is worth a lot of money. This might not seem much now. The numbers are eye-watering on this sometimes, but just have it in mind. Um, corporate developers, you'll have stand-ups, you know, n nothing amazing um, in that. You know about that already. Test managers, these guys are going to become important to you. Very important, because this is when the stuff really hits the fan. Um, any failures at this point are going to have contract uh, implications. So all that excitement you had a few months ago when you signed your contract and you hadn't really fully thought it through, you weren't sure what that meant or whatever, uh, go and read it now in detail with your lawyer, Make sure you really understand what you're responsible for. 
right? Because you'll be pushed to do things you don't need to do. So you can fight back. You can, don't forget, you can push back. You might be dealing with the almost BT, but you can push back with the right backup. And, and know your own cycle as well. You work with a corporate, you have to work to the way they work. You can't say, oh, it's ready when it's ready. No, that isn't going to work. It's ready when they need it. Otherwise, your contract is going to kill you. Ops managers, well, they're always the last to know about everything, aren't they? Um, well, so they tell me anyway. Um, uh, they, they will be responsible for running the platforms. You know, obviously, it's what they do. Um, uh, but they may well be expecting you to do support. In fact, they probably will. So you are probably third-line support. How are you going to do it? Have you thought about it? Have you ever done it? How many transactions can you deal with? How quickly can you turn them around? Who's there at four in the morning when the platform's gone down? Right? Think about it. It's big matters. So... I'm going to run through now. We're, we're coming towards the end. This is good timing. So just it's kind of summing up now. So what, what stops you getting in? Um, well, one of the big ones is um, uh, a misplaced perception that big companies are just a single thing, that there's a BT or an IBM. Or there isn't. BT, when I joined, was 260,000 people. We're now about 80. No, we've gone up to about 90,000 because we bought EE, didn't we? 90,000 people. It's like Bristol. You don't turn up at Bristol and say, where do you want the potatoes? You know, you're dealing with people, they're individuals. They're, we, people talk about corporate cultures, and there's some of it, but actually mostly it's a load of nonsense, it's fluff, yeah? It, it, there's a lot of people, 90,000 people in there, the ones you're working in, the ones you need to know, and I mentioned them earlier, so think about that. Um, existing contracts can be very sticky. You might want to think about that when you put your contracts together as well. What does sticky mean? It means they have overlapping things in them, that means if you pull that one out, this one fails, right? It's a standard thing proprietary vendors do. It can be quite hard for big companies to get out of those. And they do them to other people as well. It's a, kind of, it's a process. If you don't understand it, get advice. Not understanding your, the, the, the company you're selling to is the biggest crime you can make. If you haven't asked them what they want, why are we here? If you don't understand how they work, how can you possibly get through the process? You wouldn't sit down in front of a C compiler, never having written a line of code, and expect to turn out an analysis system in a day. So why expect to work this in the same way? Yeah, think of it. You need to learn it. Um, also, there is another thing, a little catch in this. Small businesses can be hit hard by credit vetting and credibility vetting, which big companies will do. They'll look to see, are you viable? So you better have some good answers as to why you're viable. Something to think on. Um, initial contacts. Well, things don't do, don't do. Don't turn up to some senior guy and do an incur. And, I mean, you know, we're, uh, we're all technical people. Like an awful lot of people, I mean, some people, better than others at presenting, but an awful lot of people sit there talking to the shoes about something really complicated. And some guy sat there, bored to bloody death. You lost. Don't do amateurish sort of presentations. Don't talk about the politics of OSS. They don't care. They're not interested. Remotely. They're there to make money. You may not agree with that, but you're trying to sell to them. So you've got to let them guide that. Right? Um, find details of pro projects to a senior guy. Don't save those for the technical guys. They will lap it up. You can talk to them day and night about it. They'll work overnight with you. They'll do all of that. Save it for the right time, and that's not at the beginning. Um, find out what they want. Understand what you can do. What are you good at? As I say, I'll say it again. If it looks easy, you didn't get it. It's not, ever. Um, be ready to walk away. You know what your final offer is, but always be ready to walk away. Because if you, you get to a point where you say, I cannot do it for that amount of money, you're up against someone who's promising something you can't do. So don't get yourself in the workhouse. Just say no, find the next deal. There'll always be another one. And I would advise you get some expert consultancy. I really would. If you've not, if you've not done it before, there are plenty of people out there who do it. Mr. Taylor will introduce you to some. Uh, barriers, we, we've, I've touched on this already, but it's kind of a summary. Um, external vendors are well connected. They will disrupt. Blame culture internally. Um, we, Jack Welsh, isn't it, the GEC guy, was one of, my, <laughs> one of the biggest fans of this guy, isn't he? Wonderful. He introduced a, an appraisal system where everybody every year gets marked sort of effectively one to five, and if you're five, you get the sack. Um, and that's on the perception of your management and what you did. So what does it result in? Nobody ever wants to take a risk. They won't do anything hard. Because they know if they do something hard, even if they're really good, it doesn't quite go right, then they're out the door. What a wonderful system. So thank you, Mr. Wolf. GE have walked away from this now, but uh, not all companies have. Um, so people can be very concerned about taking risks. So you need to dress up your whole project with all the support you can get as something that is extremely safe, predictable, reliable, will do what it says on the tin. Don't make it look like a risk. They won't excite them. Um, internal processes 
uh, they can struggle with separation of licensing and support costs, two minutes, yeah. Um, uh, so be ready for that. Make sure you can help them understand if, that, if that's a necessary thing. Probably won't be at this stage, but it, it has been. Um, and what else have we got? Concerns around licensing. Yeah, you can find proprietary vendors can try and um, rattle the cage a little bit on these risky open source licenses and that kind of thing. It's easy to deal with. It really is easy to deal with. Just talk to the lawyers and the um, any company guys. Don't talk to the senior guys wasting your time. They won't understand it anyway. So just be appealing. Show your benefits. Explain that you know if you own IPR on your own development, your licensing costs go down, your flexibility goes up, you won't be stuck with forced upgrades and migrations. The platform I brought in over 10 years ago is now on its fourth instantiation with its third different hardware vendor, its second operating system, its second Jane Slee in the middle. It, it's continues to do. We've worked with IBM, we've worked with HP, we've worked, it just keeps going. It keeps going. It's fantastic. Um, Interchangeable subsystems, independent integration. One of the things that's good, actually, for corporates is you can see developments and pass things in internally, which is what open source is brilliant for. Because corporates internally are crap at starting projects because it takes too long. And no senior manager's ever around for long enough to support one. So you, so, you, so you don't get that, but you can push that in. It's a thing you can sell. Licensing, always discuss with the experts and don't frighten the natives. Uh, an internal champion, try and get yourself one if you can. That will open so many doors. They know the company, they know what they're doing, they know the law, they know everything. Find one. Look around, they will help you like nobody else. It should, should be very high on your shopping list, an internal champion, because th they know all the tricks and traps. Um, so that's kind of it, really. I've talked about it. I guess we're probably about on time, are we? Yeah, we are pretty much. Um, I don't think there's a lot of time for questions. Is there?